What kinds of weapons are most popular among soldiers on the battlefield? I think one of them is definitely portable heavy firepower, especially the ones that get thrown away after a fight. In the near future, soldiers on the front lines of the US Army will have an excellent one-man weapon. Today we'll talk about the M3E1 recoilless rifle from a Swedish company. Since the birth of armored vehicles, various anti-armor weapons have been developed. During World War I, the American Davis invented the recoilless rifle using the principle of counterweight balance firing. By the time of World War II, the use of recoilless rifles had become very common. Although the firing method and ammunition pattern were the same as traditional artillery, the recoilless rifle had less barrel pressure after firing due to the reduced recoil and brakes. The recoilless rifle has many advantages and is ideal for use by special forces, paratroopers, and mountain combat units. In terms of firepower, the recoilless rifle has a relatively short range but can cause significant damage to enemy targets with its additional warhead. However, it also has more obvious disadvantages. Some recoilless rifles had an excessive tail flame after firing. It is very easy to expose the position. In addition, the tail flame damage force is large. Therefore, it should never be used in a small, closed room. Otherwise, it would be fatal to the firefighter. Later, the development of recoilless rifles lost out to rocket launchers and anti-tank missiles. This was because the recoilless rifles of the time were generally heavy, not easy to carry, and had low accuracy. The M3 Carl Gustav, for example, weighed 14 kilograms, far more than the weight of an ordinary RPG. In addition to its heavy weight, the recoilless rifle's striking effectiveness is hardly comparable to that of anti-tank missiles in the face of increasingly robust tank armor. The reason why the US has reduced the number of recoilless rifles is because this weapon no longer meets the operational needs of the US military. During the Cold War, US ground forces faced huge Soviet tank clusters, and recoilless rifles were difficult to threaten and eventually had to be replaced by rocket-propelled grenades and anti-tank missiles. In recent years, however, the United States has begun to pay attention to this weapon again. Previously, the US Army was equipped with the Swedish M3 Carl Gustav, a weapon from the 1980s that was designed for third-generation tanks with significantly enhanced armor protection and a range of more than 1,000 meters. This range is more than double that of the original AT-4 anti-tank rocket launcher, the MK-153 shoulder-launched multipurpose assault weapon, and the M-72 light anti-armor weapon, which have a range of about 500 meters. The US Army procured a small number of M3 Carl Gustav on an experimental basis, as well as armor breaking, anti-personnel, and smoke rounds. It was able to provide more direct fire support in Afghanistan, where the battlefield was vast, eliminating the need to wait for artillery and air fire support. It is mainly used to combat enemy fire points in towns and cities, fortification targets, and strong positions. The M3's excellent performance in the field has conquered the ever-picky US Army. M3's full length of only 1.065 meters and combat empty weight of 9.5 kilograms make it especially suitable for a single soldier to carry. And it also performs very well, being equipped with a variety of 84mm rockets, which are very handy in killing living targets and striking strong positions fortifications. In contrast, the Russian-made RPG-7 anti-tank rocket is only 40mm in caliber, less powerful than the M3, and only 1kg lighter. But even so, as the battlefield changes, the M3 is gradually unable to cope with the US military's combat needs. The US Army then wanted a more advanced recoilless rifle. In 2014, Sweden introduced the new M4 Carl Gustav. The M4 weighs only 6.7 kilograms, even with ammunition. The full combat weight is only 11 kilograms. In comparison, the Russian RPG-7 usually reaches 13 kilograms after loading ammunition. The recoilless barrel made of a new carbon alloy is the main reason for the M4's successful weight reduction. In terms of length as well, the barrel casing is also made of carbon fiber, and the M4's overall length has been reduced to less than 1 meter. Ammunition can be loaded into the barrel, while the front half of the RPG-7 ammunition protrudes in front of the firing port due to the supercaliber design. In terms of portability, the M4 recoilless rifle is better than the RPG-7 rocket launcher. Although lighter in weight, 
the M4's firepower is not diminished but rather more powerful. In 2017, the U.S. Army approved a plan to introduce the M4, number M3E1. This contract is reportedly worth about $87 million, with a cumulative procurement of about 1,000 sets without the M4. The first M4S are to be delivered in 2021. M4 Carl Gustav aiming is also very simple. With the use of intelligent sights, U.S. soldiers can master the skills of this weapon in a very short period of time. Once the U.S. Army's active duty units have received the M4, they can use the available auxiliary equipment to help soldiers hit enemy targets faster and more accurately. The caliber of the M4 is the same as the M3, still 84mm. It mainly fires 84 by 246 mm standard recoilless shells. Compared with the Russian RPG-7, the M4 has a crushing advantage and can be equipped with a variety of ammunition, including high explosive, armor breaking, assault, smoke, and illumination rounds. You can choose the right ammunition according to different mission requirements. When equipped with armor breaking ammunition, the M4 can penetrate 900 mm of homogeneous armor at a range of 250 meters. Although this performance is not enough to fight against the most advanced main battle tanks of various countries, the M4 is perfectly powerful enough when fighting against lightly armored targets. For the United States, which often fights local wars, the M4 is simply tailor-made for soldiers. After solving the accuracy problem of recoilless rifles, the M3E1's firepower sustainability and efficiency ratio are also significantly higher than those of rocket launchers and anti-armor missiles. It can reduce the operational costs of the U.S. military to a certain extent. The U.S. has contracted with Saab Sweden since 2020 to procure 2,460 M4 recoilless rifles and will also significantly increase its stockpile of the new He-441E rounds for possible future conflicts. The new He-441E shell is a multi-purpose shell developed by Saab that can be programmed and controlled soldiers. The soldier can select the attack mode, such as airburst or impact, through the safety device to accomplish different tasks such as armor breaking, barrier breaking, and personnel killing. Coupled with the new FC-135RS fire control system, the range can reach 1,500 meters, which will significantly increase the mission flexibility of the M3E1 team. In terms of range, the M4 recoilless rifle far exceeds the Russian-made RPG-7. The maximum range against armored targets is over 400 meters and over 700 meters against construction fortifications. In contrast, the RGP-7 has a maximum range of only 200 meters against armored targets and 500 meters against fortifications. In terms of firing accuracy, the M4's ammunition is much more stable in flight after firing. The RPG-7, on the other hand, also relies on collapsible wings and balance bars to maintain stability during flight and is very susceptible to crosswinds. Of course, there is no perfect weapon, the M4 also has some disadvantages. For example, the sights are easily knocked out of alignment when carried, the safety is not very secure, it can't be carried in the chamber, it can't be launched quickly, and so on. The biggest problem with the launch is the huge tail exhaust, the high pressure generated will blow the rear debris away. Personnel in the center of the rear Spitfire area may also be burned. The announcement comes after Saab signed a contract with the Norwegian military to supply programmable artillery shells. This is a 15-year framework agreement. The Norwegian military will be supplied with supporting ammunition for the M4. This includes the He-448 programmable high explosive rounds. The new He-448 is a significant improvement over the US-equipped He-441. The shooter can directly select the fuse of the He-448, including the touchable mode and airburst mode. In airburst mode, the shooter can set the time fuse to enable it to detonate over the target for maximum enemy kill. The He-448 brings a new level of firing accuracy, range, and killing effectiveness. By replacing the mechanical fuse used in He-441 with a small electromechanical fuse, the weight of the projectile can be reduced, resulting in a higher initial velocity of fire and a shorter flight time to the target. The He-441 has a range of about 1,300 meters, and the He-448 has a range of 1,500 meters. He-441 has 800 steel balls, while He-448 has 4,000 tungsten balls. 
This means that the He-448 has a larger kill radius, and even soldiers wearing body armor will still be killed by the high-speed tungsten balls. In addition, the He-448 weighs only 2.5 kilograms, 0.5 kilograms lighter than the He-441. The M4 Carl Gustav also has the FCD-558 fire control system. The He-448 programmable ammunition is able to communicate with the FCD-558 fire control unit through the gun mechanism, thus completing the programming of the ammunition. When the He-448 is used in conjunction with the new fire control device FCD-558, it can significantly reduce the shooter's workload while also increasing tactical flexibility. Using the controls on the FCD-558, the shooter can select the mode of attack and send the setting as an electronic message to the fuse of the projectile prior to firing. In addition, the FCD-558 fire control unit can fire older ammunition, and the He-448 can be fired using the M3 Carl Gustav card, but not in airburst mode. Such a hit-and-miss weapon, but also one with powerful firepower, which country cannot like it. Well, that's it for this film. We'll see you next time.